I'm Dory Croggy. We're here at Technology Center of DuPage. Come inside with me and we'll take a look at Future Ready at TCD. I'm here with John Beckman and Greg Leston, instructors in the fire science and EMT area of TCD. This is obviously uh, meant to be a two-year program. Um, tell me a little bit about how the program starts when, when someone comes in as a junior, what are they covering their first year? All right, when they come in with a junior, we um, go ahead and get them started with first responder first. That is the first, what the first responder is, is a, is a step below EMT, which is what Greg teaches. And what that does is prepares them for EMT so they can do a lot better. And then what we do is a second uh, semester, I mean second um, semester of that first year, we go ahead and go over fire science and then ha and hazardous materials. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing they do as a junior. Okay, and is this primarily classroom starting out, or is it a little bit of both, classroom and hands-on? We have both, classroom and hands-on. So both of it's classrooms and hands-on, and um, we try to give them as much hands-on as possible because then their skill level is a lot better when they get to EMT, and then Greg will go ahead and tone those up a lot more where they're able to go ahead and get into the EMT part of it. Okay, and then Greg, tell me about the, the skills that they gain in that second year. Second year students take one class, it's the emergency medical technician class. It's a 10 college credit hour class. It's fairly rigorous. Um, there's ACT minimums. If they pass the EMR class with 80%, that fills their prerequisites. Otherwise, they have the reading and writing prerequisites. So it's actual college class. They're getting College of DuPage credit for the uh, two years wow. that they're here. If students complete both years in the program, they actually get 22 hours of college credit, which is a third of their way to an associate's degree in fire science. A majority of our students go on to COD or other local colleges or four-year institutions to get degrees in paramedicine, medicine, nursing, or fire science management. So it's a great start. We, like first year program that John teaches, um, do a lot of hands-on. It's almost a 50-50 split. Um, a, lot of, a lot of textbook learning and material because at the end of their first year they will challenge a national licensing exam to get their national license as an EMT, which is their passport to paramedic school and further training in the career path. And is, is that the kind of schooling that, that is necessary or just recommended in order to become a firefighter? I mean, how, how far onto the required path are they when they get out of here? Uh, great question. And majority of DuPage County fire departments require you to have a paramedic license before you can even pick up an application to become a firefighter. There are some departments and some major metropolitan departments across the country that will hire you strictly as a firefighter and you don't need a paramedic license, but that's really... Um, rare. So it's almost a requirement to get an EMT license and even to work on an engine as you know a firefighter you should have some basic medical training and that would be EMT training or EMR training. So an EMT license is very lucrative to have for these students especially at 18 years old. They're coming out way ahead of the curve of the average 18 year old. They come out of here with a national career readiness certificate, a portfolio with a resume, cover letter, personal statement ready for the interview panel um, which they can use for college as well and an EMT license along with a lot of other certifications they earn the first year. So they're well ahead of the curve of any 18 year old that really wants to get in this career path and several students many of the students that are in this career path some are exploring it but most of them know they want to be in this career path they have you know parents and grandparents that have been in that the career path for years and they they know they've known from all, for a long time they want to pursue this career path some get through the two-year program say no it's not quite for me I think I'd really rather go into nursing or medicine which is awesome because they've had they still had an EMT training and, and they've know this is what I don't want to do as a firefighter so we consider it a win-win in any situation and, and and that that's a good question are there are there other areas that aren't necessarily obvious that you know um, you're studying fire science here but maybe I don't want to be a firefighter what other types of students do you see taking this program well you can have people that want to go in the medical field mm -hmm. so they want to be their physician or a nurse so they take EMT that will help them towards getting that degree and going to college for that so it gives them hands-on and patient care Mm -hmm. So they go ahead and do that. The other thing is FEMA, which is a government agency that uh, goes to uh, in, in uh, different areas like the floods, like uh, hurricanes and things like that. So they actually can get that kind of information from here too. And if they want to explore that, they can go ahead and do that also. Mm -hmm. But Greg will bring in more that would um, maybe benefit the students that way their second year. Yeah, we bring in um, second year students, they're seniors. Um, 
they're, they're more mature, they've had some training, and we do a lot of field trips. We go to a dispatch center, which is another career path. Emergency medical dispatcher is, is a career path. And we'll go to a, a large metropolitan dispatch center and see those people. Um, we do cross training with private ambulance companies, and the students actually get to do ride time on a private ambulance company in the city of Chicago. So they're actually going to get that experience. And they're, of course, to get their EMT license, they're required to do two eight hour shifts in an emergency room. We go above that in the experience and training and field trips. So um, we try to give them as many career paths, uh, opportunities to explore as possible. Uh, to, to know what you want to do at 18 is quite remarkable to begin sure. with. So just having these feelers out to know what you want to do or don't want to do is, is a great experience for the students. And when they're all said and done, they uh, earn the, I've had the opportunity to earn 22 hours of college credit. And, the, and they're getting the opportunity just far beyond those two or three hours a day. It sounds like you're giving them a lot beyond that. Students, especially the second year students, spend a lot of extracurricular time in their squad studying, in study groups, in their clinicals. Um, it's a, it, they, they put a lot of work into it, past what they're just here in the physical hours with us here in this building. Absolutely. And what are the, the career, um, n not opportunities, but, but how much our, our community is looking for this. How how competitive, I guess, is the word I'm looking for, is this field? Um, I have a couple, I know a couple large, large private ambulance companies that said they will hire every student out of this class at 18 years old with an EMT license. They'll take them. Um, we offer students the opportunity for scholarships to Loyola's paramedic program. Um, the students are well ahead of the curve. In terms of um, some of their training, I just kind of want to bring what you're going to see today and kind of preparation for the scenario is the students have literally had a, probably about a month of instruction out of the entire curriculum. Um, I'm amazed at what they've picked up in just a month, but we work on communications, assessments, treatment, um, assessing a multiple incident scene and does establishing command structure, calling in for resources, working in a team. Teamwork is huge. Communications is huge. Um, yeah, there are just several parameters, not just treatment of transport, but there's a lot about uh, working in a team and in management and managing yourself. Um, it's, a, it's a lot for the student to learn. But um, yeah, they're, they, students that have been in this program are well received at College of DuPage, and many of the students are, are accepted into paramedic school because paramedic school requires you to take a, a pre entrance exam mm -hmm. and an interview. Not everybody gets into paramedic school. So our job is to get, get them successful to get into that classroom. Ah. So the next thing what happens is we arrive on the scene and we go ahead and establish command. Command is the person that's in charge of the scene and ordering more, uh, uh, requesting more ambulances, more help, and um, what they're doing right now is we have a word called triage. It's a French word that means sort, and what we do is we look for the ones that are most critical, we deal with them first, and then we go on down to the ones that are not as critical, and then the ones that are walking wounded, and then the ones that are DOA, uh, that are deceased. So we look at prioritizing our patients first before we do anything. Once we, pri pri uh, once we, um, pri once we go ahead and um, figure out which we have for uh, priority, then we go ahead and uh, transport that one. Okay. Now are these uh, second year students then? They're, they're second year students, yes. They're all second year students. And yeah, they're, they're all EMT. Okay. What they're doing right now is uh, starting up our uh, Genesis unit, which is also the Jaws of Life. Um, it's, uh, what we'll go ahead and uh, what we do is, what we need to do is, is remove the car away from the patient, not the patient out of the car. We need to remove the car away from the patient first, then we go ahead and uh, get the patient out. Okay. So what they're going to do is pop a door, and once they pop the door, they're going to go ahead and uh, move it out of the way so we're able to get to our patient. Because the first concern that we're concerned about is, is we're concerned about um, neck injury. Okay. So we want to make sure that uh, they're fine. Now, since students are trained as both firefighters and EMTs, mm -hmm. is this typical where some of them are working on the actual extrication and then the others are yes. EMTs? Okay. Yep. Yeah. 
It happens a lot because we're cross-trained, so one day you can be on the fire engine, so you'll be doing extrication, but you're also a paramedic, so you can be helping the paramedics. Because there's two paramedics on the ambulance, and then there's uh, three firefighters on the um, on the engine. So, but we're all, since we're all cross-trained as firefighter paramedics, we could be doing everything. Okay. Is that just typical here in Addison, or is that across the board? Any company that they would find a job at, they would have to know both skills? You know what, it's mostly in DuPage County or in the Lake County, Cook County area, yes. And then when you go ahead and look at, and we can leave Chicago out of it, they're like their own little entity, there are firefighters there. But a lot of them are, a lot of them are starting to be cross-trained on the engine as paramedics, and then they just have paramedics only. Okay. So um, Chicago's a little different entity, but in the suburbs, we go ahead and are cross-trained. Okay. There's only one or two fire departments in the area that aren't, that are just firefighters, and they contract out um, paramedics. I see. But they all do the exact same thing. So what they did is remove the car, Door, what they do is get the car door out of the way, so now they're able to go ahead and get in there and get their patient. What they're doing now on that um, Bonneville is they're making what we call a purchase point. It's a point to where the tool can get in, into the side and pop the door. So what they're doing is, is they're able to make a point where the tool can get in there and then open the door. And a lot of times, the, the being students and stuff, they don't have their gear on, but what the firefighters from Addison have their gear on, and that's what we're all dressed as, because um, safety is the number one priority. Sure. And as you notice over in the green car, they're um, getting the individual out of the um, car, but using a backboard, because again, we're always worried about, um, we're always worried about neck injury. The cars come from Weston Sons or Bloomingdale Towing. So what they do is um, we call them up ahead of time, request the cars. They have some junk cars that we're able to go ahead and uh, um, be used just like this for training and stuff. And they do, you know, we love those guys. They do such a great job. They help us out here. They help us out at the fire department. Those are our two main uh, towing companies that we like to call because they're always there for us, which is really great. So you got Command who is getting involved, he really shouldn't, <laughs> but they're shorthanded so that does happen sometimes. The person that's in Command is the one that oversees everything and is supposed to be telling people where to go, what to do, and then they uh -huh. prioritize, again, they designate another person to maybe be uh, medical or be triage or be um, staging, which we call it, which means uh, the other ambulances will be sitting in an area waiting to move up to take patients as they come out. Okay. <laughs> And as people seen on the news lately, there's been some bad accidents where um, this stuff does actually, everything does happen. How much medical assistance are they typically going to be able to provide as opposed to getting them to a hospital as, as quickly as we possible? Do, we do, uh, since we're all paramedics, we do all, all ALS um, interventions, which are, um, you know, we can start IVs, we put them on the backboard to see collar, we bandage everything that um, is bleeding, control any bleeding, um, give them oxygen, and then stabilize them that way. And then in route to the hospital, we will go ahead and do uh, other things in route to the hospital depending on what they need. Now, any severe traumas go to a level one trauma center which is Good Samaritan Hospital or Loyola. Okay. Um, we make that decision as paramedics we make that decision that they're gonna go there. Um, level two trauma centers are designated to where they can get a surgeon in or a trauma surgeon within a, within a half hour to an hour. They can get them in roughly a half hour and they're right around the corner basically and that would be Glen Oaks, Elmhurst or Alexian Brothers. Okay. So we make the decisions the patients don't make the decision on that we make the right. decisions uh, where they go especially when it's in trauma. I'm with Eric Kramer and Russ Algram, both from the Addison Fire Protection District, who has a really close working relationship here with TCD. Um, Eric, tell me a little bit about your experience with TCD and, and how typical it is of, of some of the, the people at the Addison Fire Protection District. Um, actually, I used to be an instructor here at TCD, and uh, we've always asked the help from the fire district because it actually um, it adds a little bit more weight to the instructors here when they get to re go through with some of the guys that are actually on the job and they uh, kind of interact with them and it's a more of a buy-in to the program when they see we actually do this stuff that we're actually talking about. Right. 
So do you typically come in and lecture to the students or are you involved in some of the more hands-on things that they're experiencing? No, we're, we're main, mainly on the uh, hands-on kind of stuff. We do have some guys come back and teach and lecture for uh, CPR and stuff like that, but mainly with the fire science kids, it's more hands-on in basically the stuff that you just saw. And the partnerships that you have um, with TCD, we, we kind of understand what the students are getting out of it. I mean, like you said, they're, they're meeting people who are in the career, but what do you think that the, the fire district in particular, or maybe some of the other companies around here get out of the partnership? Uh, us on the fire district side, we think it's great because this is this is the starting point. You know, we all wish we had programs like this when we were in school because this is a huge gateway into what we do, and it's an exposure well before they even get into this program or into the into the career. Um, and, and even even us, when we get here, we have fun with the kids. You know, this it's this is a, a starting point. Sometimes it's it's pretty rare we get to to get somebody to teach from this point on. You know, a lot of times when people get hired by us, they already have experience. And it's kind of nice to be a, a, a starting point for some of these kids. And, uh, you know, we all love it. You know, we uh -huh. come here and these kids look up to us. And, and, and the guys become kind of mentors. Absolutely. And, and, you know, the, the best you can be is, is also teaching it. So you uh -huh. learn more by teaching as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was Greg who mentioned a lot of the kids that are going into uh, fire science or EMT kind of have that family background. I think that's kind of very typical of firefighters. Um, is, is that the case with most of the students that you've dealt with, or are you providing another layer of mentorship? Um, it's absolutely another layer. Not everybody here has come from the family side. Um, I, I can You can tell on some of the kids, they, they know a lot of the stuff that we talk about already just from their, their, their parents um, and some of these other kids, and they actually help them too. It's actually mentoring inside the program as well, mm -hmm. um, just from that experience. And Russ, you're, you're involved here at TCD as well. Tell me a little bit about your experience with the program here. How long has it been going on? Uh, I'm in charge of the Fire Explorer program. We have a Fire Explorer post, uh, 343 at Addison, and that's been in existence for about a year now. Um, and a lot of the students who are here at TCD also belong to the program. It's not, it's not a TCD program. It's through the Scouting, uh, Learning for Life program, and it gives them a practical experience of what it's like to be in the fire service. So we actually do most of the same drills that we do with the Explorer program are the same drills that we do with the firefighters themselves and we actually have a program where they can ride along with the firemen so they can sign up come in and stay at the station train with us work with us ride on the vehicles uh, work with our equipment as well do you typically see explorers going into the TCD program or the other way around p kids who are in TCD then joining your explorers uh, the Explore program starts at age 15 through 21, so they're generally in high school to start with. So most of them are in the TCD program and they hear about the Explore program because some of the other guys that they work with uh, here at the school are people who are also in the program. So a lot of them come from TCD to us, but we have guys who are in TCD, we have people who are not in TCD. Anywhere from the Addison area to West Chicago, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of students, a lot of interest in our program, but um, we work with TD. TCD, we share some of the same equipment, some of the same uh, uh, drills that we work together with. Uh -huh.